Hey everybody, welcome into this week's episode of Tony's Spot on Fishing. I'm your host, Tony Krizek, joined once again by Chris Mobrito. And we're out here in uh, what I guess could really be considered winter conditions. We're out on the Des Plaines River today, and man, it is a chilly one. We got temps in the 30s, thankfully not much wind so far, but uh, we got a mix of snow and rain coming in. So that's gonna make things rather interesting. This is, of course, our, our last open water shoot that we're filming for the season here. Uh, but we are going to show you all the tips, tricks, and techniques of how you can catch fish all winter long down here on the Des Plaines River. Man, it's going to be chilly. But that's all this week on Total Spot on Fish. The key to, to fishing out here, especially under these cold temps, you know, water temperatures are only like 44 to 46 degrees right now, um, depending on where you're at in the river. Now, there are a couple discharges on the river that'll warm it up a little bit, but it's not going to get too much more than this as the winter months go on. So a lot of times, as we're going along, if fish are real aggressive on a given day, we can still run that square bill crankbait like we talked about in the... Uh, in the top five that we released previous to this episode. But primarily we're focusing on a lot of those plastics and we're fishing extremely slow and extremely methodical. You know, we'll run that shaky head, the biffle bug, or that ugly otter, and even a finesse jig. And I mean, it is real slow, almost dragging it for the most part. Colors, you know, black and blue, green pumpkin, chartreuse, straight green pumpkin, we do very well with. And we, we've missed a few fish already and just really been at it maybe about an hour tops. And it's been a lot of those short strikes, those fish have just kind of... Chris got them? Oh yeah, there we go. And Chris just stuck that one on the finesse jig. Ah, first fish in a while. <laughs> a little chunky guy. Oh yeah, it's a nice fish, nice start. All right, get him back in the water. But yeah, these fish are, are you know, they're cold-blooded species. You always got to remember that. So water temperature is going to dictate exactly how aggressive they are. And in these cool temps, running these finesse type baits are really exactly what we have to do. So like I said, I've missed a handful of fish on the biffle bug. Chris just switched over to that finesse jig and popped one right away. And now here's another little trick, and Chris and I were, were talking off camera. He's running black and blue, a black and blue skirt, but he's actually also running a chartreuse trailer. These fish love that contrasting colors. See, so yeah, I got the black and blue and purple jig. Chartreuse net bait with a little bit of red uh, spiked on the the uh, claws. So, and that fish just sucked it in, no real big hit. Just kind of like, hey, I'm here. So, when I picked it back up, that's when I felt them. So these fish, they'll still eat all winter long. And there's gonna be days where they'll be more aggressive than others. And like I say, we have a, a front coming through. We're supposed to get that mix of rain and snow. Actually should have, I shouldn't speak too loud, should have already started by now. Thankfully, we're still dry. But, you know, definitely dress for the conditions out here. It's, it is cold. And of course, you know, if you're going to continue to use the boat out here, uh, like we are in through the winter months, always have a bag of salt with you for that boat ramp. You never know. It could get a little dicey there. Um, you know, just be prepared for a little, you know, any kind of conditions you may encounter out here. Uh, always safety first, you know, and of course, after running the outboards, if you're not in a, keeping your boat in the garage, you're definitely going to want to winterize it and get the water out of that boat, out of the engine, so you're not freezing up the motor either. But man, I'll tell you, 
it's, it's just a way to extend that open water season is to come out here and do this. It's just another alternative to fishing through the ice. So when we first started this morning and where we first got our bites, we came right out of Big Basin Marina, hung right, and we were fishing that rock shoreline into that first cut. And you notice we're always looking, the type of structures, <clears throat> excuse me, we're looking for is a lot of that rock area. And think about, you know, even where weeds once were on some of these flats. But you may still have some of that vegetation. It may be dead. But if you have areas where that rock and the weeds come together, that's the areas we want to focus on. Main River Point, like an area here we call the Green Marker Point, that rock is going to hold some of the heat. You know, the sun beats down on the rocks, it warms them up, and it'll warm that water up. That'll bring the bait fish up, and then it brings the predators up like the bass, the large mouth and the small mouth. So just little things you want to look for when you're, you're out here. And those five baits that we talked about in that top five, that's what you're going to want to actually pretty much religiously throw out here. Uh, just for the simple fact of it's, it's the bread and butter that we do out this way. We've been fishing it this way for years and years and years. Now, overall, it has been a pretty slow morning, especially for the displays. Normally, it's usually a little more of a fish factory, and a lot of it, I think, has to do with the drastic changes of weather, just how cold it's gotten recently and how quickly water temperatures have fallen. I mean, fish are definitely lethargic, but usually we can get a few more fish to go. We're going to keep plucking away, working on them, and like I say, focus on those areas, rock areas, rock points. Think about where you caught fish in the summer, some of those flats as well. And of course, if you can get down near some of the warm water discharges, legally, without crossing boundaries, um, of course, look to those areas as well. Let me tell you something, man. Battle in the elements. Ugh. Now that's a little guy, no doubt. That is a small fish. But man, if you knew what we have gone through today just to catch a couple of these guys, holy cow. I mean, we've got some sleet and rain falling. Uh, you know, Chris has bet, had the better hookup ratio fishing that full-size jig. Um, I mean, he's one for two on it. I've been bouncing between that biffle bug and the biffle head and actually went back to bread and butter that I've, I always said was my all-time favorite bait, and that's that ugly otter, or the baby otter, the little otter. And, man, I'll tell you, we came up on this the I-55 bridge, kind of an area we were able to get out of some of this... Uh, this rain and wind and everything and uh, right away I hooked and lost one had a couple misses Chris missed one and then finally we were able to stick that one I'll tell you what I, I think what it really boils down to today what you're seeing is so much of it is uh, the drastic change in water temperatures we've had the drastic air temperature change it, it's so quick because honestly this is very uncharacteristic of this river normally got him Chris got off Chris just lost one there I mean normally it is a lot more action out here and I'll tell you you can just see they're still adjusting to it and I, I firmly believe in about another week week and a half once everything has calmed down you can come back out here fish these same patterns and fish these these same areas and and your catch rate is going to be phenomenal 
Um, still fishing primarily slow, but there are fish to be caught here. There's no doubt. But <coughs> man, we're we're going through some crazy stuff to get them. I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. It is really turning nasty out here. The rain's picked up. It is cold, wet, miserable. <laughs> And man, uh, I'm not gonna mince words here. It, it was a hard day on the water, I'll tell you. Um, but hey, we caught a couple fish. We did, we each caught a fish. You know, uh, we, we missed some fish along the way. But again, this bite's only gonna get better. Plan your days, you know, if you got a decent shot at weather, unlike what we were, kinda had no choice but to come out to film today. This was our last opportunity to produce an open water show for the 2017 season. But you know, the, got to roll with the punches and deal with what mother nature gives us and just a rough day overall but Chris my man I thank you sir thank you for everything oh, yeah. this year no man it was, it was a great season again thank you to all our fans out there uh, and viewers who support spot on fishing we couldn't do it without you guys be sure and keep checking the spot on fishing Facebook page uh, that is exactly where you can keep up with when the new shows are coming out we still have a couple more top fives that'll be released after this program. You're also gonna see uh, the ice fishing season. I got a feeling it's not too far away where we'll be out on the ice around the Chicagoland area in Southern Wisconsin and showing you how to catch some fish through the ice as well this year. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, absolutely, it is a blast. But I'll tell you what, this is gonna wrap our open water season here. Uh, <laughs> Again, uh, man, it, we wish it could have been better for the grand finale, but hey, it is what it is. So again, everyone, thank you very much. Once again, my name is Tony Krizek, and we can't wait to come back next year and do this all over again on Tony's Spot on Fishing.